name is Wade Nomura, and today we are going to take a look at one of those events that happens each year during New Year's, that is the Tournament of Roses, and Rotary's involvement with putting a float in there. With me today I have Jermaine Yee, Rotarian, and a member of the Tournament of Roses. Welcome, Jermaine. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Uh, being a member of the Tournament of Roses, what is, what is that? So being a member means you volunteer each and every year, and you wear a white suit on New Year's Day, and there's 935 of us. Yeah. And, and your job specific, what, what do you do uh, with that white suit on? It changes every two years, but <laughs> okay. uh, this year I'm staying up all night from 4 o'clock uh, on the 31st to the next day at 9 o'clock where I clock out. <laughs> okay, yeah. and what are you going to be doing that whole time? I'll be riding a scooter, making sure the staging <laughs> area is ready for showtime. Got it, got it. Um, I'm presuming it gets pretty cold at night down there, something that... Yeah, yeah. Well, last year was uh, 28 degrees when I left home at 2 a.m. Oh, my gosh. So, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I do remember. Um, yeah. Now, with the El Nino, are you anticipating a possibility of rain there? You know, that's something we don't talk about at the tournament, <laughs> and uh, we, we prepare for it. Uh -huh. we, yeah, we're ready for it. You are? We okay. are ready for it. That sounds good. <laughs> um, as far as the parade route itself, are there any special things that you have to do to... Um, make sure that everything's in place? Do you have to do pre-runs up and down, for example? Yeah, you know, there's uh, a lot of security that goes on. Security uh, forces coming from all over, not only local, but also the federal level to help us make sure that the area is safe. And, you know, especially with an expected attendance about a million or slightly wow. under a million wow. in Pasadena. Okay. So it, it is a lot of mostly security and securing the area for, for okay. this, yeah. Uh, this year being, uh, I, I would say, kind of a sensitive year internationally, um, are you planning or seeing any kind of step up as far as security is concerned? Yeah, you know, I'm not in position to, to really know don't, a lot of these information. Don't have to, exactly. But I'm pretty sure we are. Okay. You know, uh, each year is unique. I think there's experts working on this. Yeah. Okay. Um, have there been anything special done for the floats themselves or some of the um, entries to the, to the parade anticipating the possibility of rain? Is there anything that you could do for them? You know, uh, there's not a lot, you know, but the uh, a lot of the floats have to, well, the, the surface of the float has to be organic or something that was once alive. Okay. And so there's not many, there's not too many options when it comes to preparing for the rain and uh, it'll, it'll still look pretty good, uh, rain or shine. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I would guess that some of the floats have music, things like that, actually all the mm -hmm. floats do, with the um, electrical components, speakers, mm -hmm. things like that, is that something that they have to address beforehand? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. You know, they do testing even, I believe, starting in the summertime, they do testing of the floats, of everything on the float. Oh, okay. Yeah. Good, good. Now, you are a recent member, I believe. You just joined the uh, Rotary Club of Los Angeles, I LA did, 5. Yeah. Oh, good. And how's that? You know, it, it's been fun. I've, I've been sponsored by LA 5 for two years now, so joining it seems to be the next logical step. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. LA 5, interesting. Uh, why do you call it LA 5? LA5 is called LA5 because it's the fifth oldest Rotary Club in the world. Wow. Yep. Okay. Good. Good for you. Um, we are actually going to be taking a look at some of the pictures uh, from the float that actually we've done over the years. I fortunately, uh, very fortunately, have been the past chair of the um, Rotary Rose Parade Float Committee, and each year we put out a float. I'd like to go through some of the photos with you and take a look at, first of all, what it's like uh, to do a float. This is the Rotary float that we actually put in each year. The funding for that, it's about a $150,000 project, by the way, is all privately funded. None of this money comes from Rotary International itself. It is all privately funded by individual donations and club donations. LA5 is one of those clubs that have been very generous over the years. The first picture we have shows a picture of myself in the float that we designed for that year. And what was unique about that float is that uh, we get to pick kind of what we want to put out there. The float itself was uh, designed to be a train. And the reason that I picked that float design was that it is one of the few floats we've done in the past where the riders, the attendees, actually have a purpose on that float itself. Usually they're kind of, I would call them, quote, plantons, people just standing on a float itself. But with the train theme, we actually are riders, passengers of that float. The next picture shows the scale of that float. They are quite large. Some of the largest floats in Jermaine, you could help me out with this. I believe the largest one each year is the um, Honda float, correct? 
It really depends, but in the past, Honda has always outdone themselves every year. Yeah. Good. Now we brag. Now well, I bragged about the cost of us being about well, it's eighty-five thousand dollars construction cost, but about a hundred and fifty thousand dollars project. Mm -hmm. What would you guesstimate um, would be the cost of that Honda float? Yeah, you know, last year I think it's definitely well over a million dollars. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm thinking that too. Yeah. They do an excellent job each year. One year I remember the float was so large. They had about four or five satellite floats to the big float. They did, yeah, <laughs> joined to the big float. Wow, well, kind of reminded me of Star Wars on that one. That was big <laughs> with the mothership. The picture that I show uh, next is actually the float itself uh, after construction going down the parade route. And that is one of the fascinating parts. I would say that the people that have participated in that float always talk about what it's like to, uh, to be on that float route. And maybe you could help me out with that. They say the most sensational part of that is making that turn. Yeah. All of a sudden, when you see a sea of people when you're going down Colorado Boulevard. Yeah, no doubt about that. The uh, turn from Orange Grove to Colorado, it, it's like seeing a million people's eyes on you. <laughs> You'll never forget that. That's true, and yeah. it's downhill. So it is by, downhill. by looking at it downhill, you could see to the yeah. very end of that parade it route. It seems like you could see about five miles down. Which yeah. it is, right? Yeah. Roughly five miles it's, to the end. It's a little bit more than five miles. Okay, yeah. but that include, does that include the turn? I, don't think so. Okay, yeah. so that is five miles but in a straight uh, yeah. line. It's a little bit over five miles. Wow, yeah. wow, that is amazing. Um, each float, by the way, has an attendant person, somebody that's mm -hmm. on the, the tournament mm -hmm. team that walks down or escorts down, yeah. usually with sco scooters, I believe. Yep. Okay, yeah. okay. And are they assigned specifically to a float? They are. They are what, uh, what we call the Big Three Committee. So okay. this is part of the parade operations. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever done that part of it? No, that's coming up in two right. years. Oh, in two yeah. years, okay. So are you looking forward to that? Maybe I'll get rotary. <laughs> yeah. That would be good. We'd love to have you on our yeah. float. That would be great. Some of the uh, events uh, focus in, and every year, by the way, we have the International President of Rotary as a, as a rider. We invite them each year, and since Kalyan Banerjee in the year 2012, have we had every president uh, attend and be a participant on that float. The, first, uh, the second year we had was uh, Suguchi Tanaka, and that year, the Grand Marshal was Jane Goodall. And what was unique, I would say, or fascinating about it, I was tasked to be the aide to the president that year. And I did not realize, we int I introduced Jane to uh, Tanaka, and they hit it off instantly. I go, well, that was kind of unique. They seemed to be old friends, which I found out they were. At the uh, International Convention, the year right before that, Tanaka was the chair of the International Convention. Jane Goodall was the guest of honor. I, I honor remember that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I saw pictures. So, th so that was great. They hit it off quite nicely. The other interesting part, I would say, about the float and the events surrounding the Tournament of Roses is the football game, mm -hmm. the, the, Ro the Rose Bowl itself. Yeah. And I took Tanaka. He, each year, we take the president to the, um, to the football game. And talk about culture shock. Uh, very few times Tanaka had never seen an American football game. So as we were walking in, we were met by these uh, five gentlemen <laughs> that were promoting their team. And Tanaka spoke to me in Japanese, and he goes, my gosh, those guys are huge. <laughs> there, there are some big guys there. And the vice president's wife understood it, even though he said in Japanese that he wanted to have a picture taken with them. And so we had to stop those people and actually take the picture. Uh, again, from, boy, those guys are really big, to uh, let's take a picture. They were very cordial, by the way, in taking the picture. What was interesting is one of the, uh, the guys was actually a son of a Rotarian. And his quote was, I can't believe it. I am having my picture taken with no shirt on with the Rotary International president. Now, talk about unique experience. I can't wait to tell my dad. <laughs> so that was one of those uh, uh, unique times. Each year we also do um, a dinner, and, and that dinner is in honor of the riders and also the, um, the president himself. The picture that I show there, here is the president that was in that year was Ron Burton, along with um, his wife and two special guests. That year we um, focused on the efforts of polio and polio eradication. And with us we had um, Debbie Saban and Jonathan Sulk. Both um, parents were involved with the um, development of the polio vaccine. And so they became riders that year. And it was one of those outstanding years where we actually were able to focus on a specific um, project and project event itself. 
But this uh, next few pictures you should be quite aware of because this is part of uh, what your club does. There's a picture of myself with the uh, the Queen's Court, the, the Queen of the uh, yeah. Tournament of Roses and uh, the Princesses. Uh, by the way, if you're looking at this picture in the audience, you may note that I may be standing in a hole there. I'm not really not that short, but they, they really are that tall. <laughs> yeah. uh, Jermaine, you get a chance every year to, to work with this, this team, mm -hmm. don't you? Yeah, I do. And this, is, this year is the 98th year of uh, wow. doing the Rose Queen. Wow. So in two years, we're going to have a big 100th year. And so every year, the Queen and Court uh, will, be, will attend a uh, Rotary LA5 meeting. Okay. And it's always hosted by Fritz Coleman, our weatherman from okay. NBC. And we have a picture uh, next showing Fritz uh, at yeah. your, your, turn, at your uh, club, yeah. talking to one of the tournament princesses or queens. Yeah, and Fritz is a, uh, I think he's an honorary member, but or maybe he is a full member of uh, LA5. I believe he's an honorary member, but that's your club, so I he's, guess I shouldn't speak on that. I, I, I'm not sure, but he's here maybe twice or three times. I, I've seen him in, he, in the time that I've been he, here. He does a great job, by the way. He's outstanding, yeah. um, very entertaining, yeah. live. That guy's quite an energetic kind of guy. I agree. Yeah. Um, but now the Queens and, and the court, they're actually high school, correct? Is that the age? 17? Yeah, so it's 17 to 20 or okay. 21. So okay. they could be in community college. Okay. And this year, I believe they're all 18 years old or 17 years old. That's what I thought. Now, last year, I remember mm -hmm. they were all 17. That's why I'm kind of surprised you said they go up to 20, 21 years old. I think 20 was the... Uh, Is that yeah, right? Be be. The last four or five years, I thought they were all 17, 18. Yeah, you know what? So this year, it's all 17 and the Queen turned 18 about two days after she was coronated. Okay. I okay. Yeah. And that is quite a big deal, by the way. They have their own escorts. Um, they th do, yeah. Sp they have their own, I guess, um, they have their fitting. They have uniforms specific that they wear for specific events. Yeah, so I was lucky enough to work with the court in the first two weeks when they were chosen to be on a the court. They go to speech training, etiquette training, how to wow. get in and out of a car and, and <laughs> speak. And so they're true ambassadors. They go to about That's 100 great. and... 100 to 120 events wow. between being chosen on the court and the Rose Parade. Wow, that yeah. is outstanding. A lot of work, too, for the, for the young ladies. Yeah. Now, how about their school? Uh, do they have tutors, things like that, that they have to have? I'm not aware that they have extra tutors, but these girls mostly are chosen because they're so outstanding, and they still Scholastically apply, then. apply for college. Wow. They still do wow. their SAT preparations while doing the court. Okay, got so it. It's a busy time. We have a picture here showing Gail Anderson from, uh, I think it's KTLA 5 News. She comes every year to um, take a look at the, the float itself and interview most of us each year on that. She's been great. She, it's been a year-round deal for her, so I wanted to give her a little bit of prop on that, and I hope there's not a conflict of interest with uh, TV Santa Barbara. <laughs> My apologies if there is. The next picture we show is a picture showing the president, that was Gary Wong and his wife, uh, Karina, and also the vice president. Uh, each year, the president is allowed to bring one of his assistants or aides from headquarters, and we were fortunate to have Ken actually uh, at two of our events. So he was a uh, been a steadfast supporter, uh, enjoyed having him, does a great job. By the way, I don't know if you realize this, but he was also the um, chair of uh, San Paulo International Convention. Yes, I do, yeah. <laughs> Okay. One thing that is unique, the following picture shows picture of the president, the president, um, international president, Gary Wong himself of um, our Rotary uh, International. Also, uh, we have members and president, international presidents from Kiwanis, Lions, and the Optimist. And each year, our committee hosts a breakfast that is the only time that this four, these four gentlemen, these four organizations will actually get together and meet. They have a private one-hour meeting, one-hour session, which we, the tournament, uh, I'm sorry, the committee hosts, along with their, their special guests and aides and, and wives. And again, what was shared in these things is private, confidential, but they oftentimes talk about some of the challenges that humanitarian organizations and nonprofits have. It seems like we as Rotarians and along with the other organizations are not alone in some of the efforts that we have. Picture showing Gary um, decorating a float. One of the joys, I would say, of having the president there is having them actually participate in it. And to let you know, they have all been very cordial, very generous, and they get pretty interested and involved with decorating a float. Gary here was uh, having a great time. Shows him putting flowers on by gluing those on. What the hard part was is that, yeah, unless you're really good at it, you're going to get glue all over the place, which uh, most presidents have not had a lot of experience putting on. So there was glue everywhere. I've got another picture here with one handsome gentleman. Uh, 
I believe that's you, Jermaine. Uh, yeah, you know, I had the <laughs> great honor of hanging out and spending a day or two with the president. I think that's a very cool crossover of the two worlds that I, I live in. That, that is true. Yeah. Um, this was before you joined the Rotary Club? This was before, yeah. Okay, okay, So good. I was a Rotaractor at good. the time. So you actually got the schmooze with the president before I you did. became the... Uh, and a, I became very good friends with Ken and Lynn Shepard. Oh, good. Yeah, they've okay. been uh, very helpful in guiding me and introducing me Very nice. Yeah. Yeah. Outstanding. We have a picture now showing the um, one of, I believe it's last year's float. And with that last year's float, it shows different riders. And the focus of that theme there was uh, water, uh, safe water throughout the world. Um, and the people that we had on the float actually represented different areas, different countries where those efforts were being made. The following picture, um, I've got a white coater there. Looks like you, Jermaine. <laughs> Give him the thumbs up there. Good for you. Um, was that part of your job assignment or were you... Uh, ditching out on a break. You no, know, I don't remember. Okay. But so, that was early in the morning. Well, maybe so. we should edit that out in case you were <laughs> ditching your work assignment there. <laughs> it, it certainly looks good. It's bright and, and white. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So. And that was one of the uh, years we actually had good weather. Uh, yeah. Very, very nice. How many times, by the way, this is an interesting question. I've been asked this a number of times. Has it actually rained on the parade in the last 10 years? Two, one time in the last 10 years. Well, 2006, one time. Okay. it rained, and I think there's one other time. One other time. Yeah, in 127-year mm, history. That is amazing. So. That is great. Uh, the next picture shows uh, Gary, his wife, and my wife, Roxanne, by the way, um, getting ready for the float. And it's one of the uh, equestrian teams. And by the way, there are a lot of horses in this parade. There were about 400 last year. 400 horses themselves? Yep, 400. Uh, that was asked, I believe, at one of those uh, contests, uh, you know, uh, trivia contests. I should have been there. You should have been there. I think I would have been disqualified. Uh, well, actually, they told me there was over 500, so I don't know if that's true or not. It's 18 equestrian units, about 400 okay. horses last year. Yeah. Very good. Uh, Gary was quite intrigued with the amount of horses. I he guess was, there's yeah. not a lot of horses in Taiwan. Not really. <laughs> Okay. Um, the next picture shows my wife, um, the president, vice president, and their spouses right before the parade is getting ready to start. Mm -hmm. And that was one of those uh, great moments where we're staging in, you wait, we were towards the end of the parade route, and what happens there is we could wait as much as an hour, hour and a half sometimes? In total, two hours, wow. depending on when you leave. Yeah. So we were lucky by half hour then. And it was cold too. It was cold it was too. Cold. But it warms up when the sun comes out. It got quite yeah. warm. Um, Part of the waiting around, I would say, is to entertain yourself. It shows uh, one of our riders there and my wife, Roxanne, entertaining themselves. They were getting ready for the cameras. Um, and we had one of our committee members, his name is Frank Griffith, who, by the way, was supposed to be here, but I couldn't make it and getting dressed up for the part, too. Mm -hmm. He walked alongside for part of the parade route with them. Okay. Uh, the start of the parade starts off slow, quiet, and easy. Uh, there's not a lot of people. And then all of a sudden, it stages into the beginning part. Uh, yeah. And, you know, uh, what we call, that's what we call TV Corner. So, TV Corner. And I believe uh, a really, I don't know the exact numbers, but a lot of people show up at the TV Corner. Okay. And uh, when, you, when you turn the corner, that's when you really get ex excited, exhilarated, yeah. and, and then you realize your hands are a little tired from waving <laughs> <laughs> right after. <laughs> that's true. Now, what is the average length of a parade from beginning to end as far as a rider? Is it two hours? Two and a half hours? On TV, it's two hours. Okay. So the section where the, the float goes through a TV or the band goes through a TV, that in total is two hours. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Got it. The next uh, few pictures, it shows um, the actual parade route then. Um, where we're on the parade, the float comes down. Uh, we get to take pictures uh, as part of the process. Uh, mm -hmm. Each of us are given two, I believe, press passes to take mm -hmm. pictures as photographers. And one of the unique things is being able to actually go out there and watch it on the route. You yeah. work for literally a year trying to get this yep. float ready to go down there and that kind of is the uh, termination or the uh, end of all of those great efforts. Yeah. Picture showing the team, this is before and after. I've got two pictures there. The before picture shows uh, the team getting ready to go down, mm -hmm. quite energetic and quite eager. And at the end, it shows the pickup van and actually the members of the, the parade team a little bit more uh, for the Warren, I would say. Uh, yeah. They had walked roughly five to six miles, is that correct? Yeah, yeah. And uh, it, it depends on the pace and the uh, strength of your voice okay. if they're yelling rotary the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> now, one other thing that's unique, I would say, and interesting, and this is for the, the group themselves that are watching the audience, oftentimes you wonder, well, 
you know, if you're on the float for four or five hours, what do you do if you need to hit a restroom? So. Yeah, there's actually a rule that if you get out of the parade, you cannot get back in. That's so right. That's we right. won't stop the parade. That's right. Yeah. You, you could jump off, but you can't jump back on. Yep. So um, oftentimes, right, the riders are warned, do not drink. Yeah. Uh, take the least amount of drinking as possible. And some people even wear diapers. <laughs> that's true. Well, that's a little more information <laughs> than we needed to have, but thank you for that. <laughs> We have with us now uh, another series of, of photos that I had created because a lot of you have seen, well, beautiful floats going down there, having no idea what it takes to actually put one of these together. So I have a set of photos here that I want to take you from beginning to end, showing you what the development of the float is, starting with the first one, a picture, a picture of the float. Um, I believe it's the same one that's behind you there, Jermaine. Yeah. This is the conceptual. This is what it looks like in art rendering before it is even done. This is a design that is done by an artist. And then we select, when I say we, the committee selects which design they like best. This one here showed uh, the world theme and that was uh, one of the reasons we selected that one. The next picture shows what we call, quote, the skeleton. That is the framework, a metal framework that goes together before the um, parts and fixtures go on that. The chassis itself, I have heard, comes from the 1940s, 1950s. They reuse them each and they every year. They reuse it, yeah, because it costs so much to rebuild one. It, exactly, yeah. and that is true. Now, what else is, I would say, unique, and you could uh, confirm this and verify this, is that if there's a breakdown, because those are 1940, mm -hmm. 1950 chassis, if there's a breakdown, I understand there's a $10,000 fine for I don't know if that's the exact figure, but you know, it does cost a lot to yeah. have someone tow the float <laughs> in, okay. the, in the middle of the parade. Well, yeah. I could tell you that is fact because I have seen that bill before. Not to us, but from okay. the float okay. committee. Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm learning something new today. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next picture shows um, the next development of, quote, the skeleton. This is the framework that goes up that actually develops the float itself. They put this together, and then the next picture shows the skinning. That is putting up some of the screen or mesh materials. Mm -hmm. And you'll see it's starting to take form at that point in time. The screen mesh material is what they fix the foam to. The following picture then shows it being foamed up and colored. The color becomes part of the plan, the design, and each one of those colors would then represent a specific flower plant, something going on that. And that's why the color theme becomes so exclusive, so mm -hmm. specific, because each of those colors will be one different type of flower, seed, or plant. The next picture shows um, the test run. Now each year, the floats have to be test run. There is a, I would say, a marshal of a fire group there that comes in there and actually has to certify mm -hmm. that the floats are safe for the people. Part of the float design itself is that you have a timed fire exit where you have 45 seconds for every person that is on the float to be able to get off that, to evacuate the float in 45 seconds. Now you can imagine, this one was pretty easy, but doing the train, we only had one ladder up, one ladder down with eight people on that. And what happens on that one, we were fortunate, is that we could kind of put ringers in. We didn't have to put the actual people that were gonna be riding that float up there. Yeah. So we got all the young people that yeah. we could find because they literally had to come down a ladder, a metal yeah. ladder. And so sure it makes had, a difference. It makes a difference. <laughs> we had the last person, which was me, actually have to jump off the float to get that certified. So sure. I couldn't see uh, President Ron Burton jumping off and somebody catching him. That would have been our challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the intricacies that the next picture shows is uh, putting the seeds in and talk about uh, intricate design. If you notice the seeds that were put up there actually have a direction. They have to be put in a certain way. I saw this float first go together with people just randomly sticking the uh, seeds on. What happened later on is they tore it all off. Yep. Had to they start from scratch again. Yeah. And part of the grading, you could tell me on, on this one, mm -hmm. is that the judging actually mm -hmm. has to show that there is no part other than flowers or organic material showing. Mm -hmm. That's so true. That, yeah. yeah, and the patterns of the seeds all matter. They all count. They, they really yep. do matter. Next picture shows uh, the flowers themselves and um, some of the ones that go on. These go on the last two days, correct? Yes. And the reason for that is? Because we showcase the float after. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And but there's also an interesting theory why a rose is so expensive uh, during Valentine's Day. It's because the rose parade takes up all the flowers in, in America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> wow, that is that is fascinating. So these go on also last two days because they're perishable. 
probably yep. the, the dry ones go on sooner mm -hmm. than that. The last picture that we show here is actually the, that float going down uh, the parade route. And that is one, I would say, accumulated efforts that we have mm -hmm. showing those floats. And this picture was taken from the grandstands, by the way. Yeah. So that kind of goes through some of the work that we have, some of those uh, parts that we put together for the float each and every year. I wanted to share that with you because oftentimes you just see the float going down, not realizing what it's all about and uh, how those came about. I would like to share with you, Jermaine, or ask you to share with us how you got involved and how you've uh, enjoyed part of that float. What's special about that parade for you each and every year? Mm. Well, you know, I, I was an intern for the Tournament of Roses, and I did... I actually worked at the Rose Bowl game when the Stanford coach, uh, David Shaw, won and teared for the first time. Uh, and, you know, it's a lot of the relationships. I actually joined Rotary because of someone I wow. met through the Tournament of Roses. And you know him. His name is Ken Chung. He was oh, also Ken? my sponsor right. into Rotary. Right. And so uh, t the tournament really opened a lot of doors for me. And like Rotary, it's about giving back. You know, a lot of uh, the things we do is about giving back to communities, things like Rotary and, and um, City of Hope and things like that. So that really was dear to my heart. That is, that mm -hmm. is great. Um, do you have any idea how many floats there are actually in the parade itself each year? Uh, each year varies. Next year is 41 and uh, the 127th parade. And I believe we have 22 bands and 15 equestrian units. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Good. Um, the floats themselves, I know we are con uh, contracted by one of the float building companies. Mm -hmm. uh, how many are there actually out there? Do you have any idea? The, the contracting the, companies? The, the, the float contracting companies. I think there are four large four contracting large companies. Contract. Yeah. And then there's a number of probably private that build yeah. their own. It's the city of Burbank builds their own. Cal Poly uh, the University right. builds their own. Right, yeah. right. Um, how many of those are actually organically grown in California? Do you have any idea how many? I don't. Yeah, yeah. But that's a fun always fact. Always that's a fun fact to find that. out. Yeah. yeah. Well, Jermaine, thank you very much uh, for sharing your time with yeah, us. And we sure you. appreciate that. We look forward to seeing you on that scooter and that white, <laughs> white outfit. Uh, I'll get pictures of you, by the way. Early in the morning. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We'll I'm excited for Early that. in the morning yep. with that. Uh, with that, everybody, thank you very much for your time. Now that you have uh, a back view of what it takes to do a float, I hope you get more of appreciation of watching that each and every year. Um, one of the things that we see is that, what, 40 million people will watch that float every year? It's broadcast in 82 countries. Right. If you count the territories, it's over 100 in wow. about 50 languages. Well, uh, with that, please enjoy it for uh, the holidays and yeah. New Year's Day. Please look for our float, the Rotary Rose Parade Float Committee. Uh, appreciate your time, your patience, and thank you very much for uh, your time and effort. We'll see you again next week.